Hi, I'm Brandon McGee, and welcome to Brandon McGee TV. I'm your host, Brandon McGee. I've been all over YouTube looking at painting videos, and they're pretty good, but I'm gonna show you a better one to paint faster and paint better. There's a couple things you're gonna need before you start painting. Of course, you're gonna need a paintbrush. Ah, yeah. This one is a three inch paintbrush for walls. I find a three inch will help you move faster instead of a two and a half inch or an inch and a half brush which you just can't transfer as much paint. Next, you will need a mini roller. I love the mini roller. It is super cheap and highly efficient to use, and it's a lot better than using that nine inch roller that is heavy. And if you're not a bodybuilder, nine inch roller is probably not for you, so I recommend a seven inch mini roller. Also, you're gonna need a cup bucket. Cup bucket will make it easier for you to travel with your paint and it gives you a nice convenient handle so you can multitask and move faster. Next, you will need a rag. Just in case you have any painting accidents, it's always handy to have a nice rag close by. And plus, you can use pretty much anything. You find an old t-shirt that you don't like anymore, cut it up and make it a rag. All right, before you get started with your paint job, you're gonna wanna prep your floor off. You're gonna need to put down a drop cloth I like to run a 4 to 12 foot runner, but if you don't want to go to the store and buy a drop cloth, you can just use old towels or bed sheets, and then the paint splatter on average just only goes about 1 to 2 feet. So where's the best place to start on your paint job? I recommend that you start cutting in your ceiling first, that makes it easy. When I say cutting in, I mean you want to pitch or frame your wall out so you can get all the hard details out of the way, and then just get your roller and just go to town. So let's start with the ceiling. Before you start cutting in, make sure to get your paintbrush and your cup bucket handy. And the best way to load your paintbrush is just to dip it in with a pulsating action. This helps get the, pulp, the paint into deep into the paint bristles, so that way you can travel farther with your paintbrush whenever you're cutting in. As you can see, I like to start about an inch or two below, and then you'll get the bulk of your paint off the paintbrush. Now, there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can cut away from you, or if you find it easier, you can cut towards you. You're gonna have to play around with this technique to see which one works better for you. For this situation, I like to paint away from me. That way it gives my eyeball an easier focal point to follow to create a nice perfect straight line on your ceiling. But once you have your paint on the ceiling about an inch away, this is where you're gonna start slowly work up the paint, and then I kinda Get firm pressure on the brush and give the paint a little bit of a curl. And then make sure your paintbrush has enough paint on it. And try not to use a dry paintbrush because if you use a dry paintbrush, you're gonna have to do a second coat and nobody wants to do a second coat. So always make sure you have enough paint on your paintbrush. This will allow you to move faster and have better coverage on your paint. As you see there, I was able to travel about six to eight inches with that dip. So instead of trying to dry brush it, I'm just gonna dip the paintbrush again, go about an inch, half inch below, and then where you left this big ball of paint, you're gonna wanna take that ball of paint and use that to travel your distance of your straight line. After you get a little bit cut in, before you move on, you're gonna wanna move paint around and clean up your paint lines and always try to feather out your edge. This edge will show up if you're rolling, so you always want to make sure it's a lighter, less consistent edge. So that way it gives you something to cut into whenever you're rolling. So once you get so far, you're going to have to reposition your step ladder and then you're just going to use the same technique. Make sure to put on as much paint onto the wall as you can because this will make cutting in so much easier. Next, we're going to cut in your baseboard. Now, the easiest way to cut in your baseboard is take your paintbrush, get your paintbrush loaded in paint, and what people tend to forget when they're cutting into the baseboard is they instantly want to go for their baseboard line. But you don't want to do that. You want to start at least an inch or so away, get the bulk of the paint off your paintbrush. Once you do that, I always recommend dip it again because more paint is always better. So I'm gonna put the paint right in an area and then I'm gonna take the paintbrush and drag it towards me. But a little secret tip to make it a little easier to paint, 
I like to use my pinky as a guide, and then I hold it on the wall, and then you want to get your paintbrush at a slight angle, and then once you get it to a good starting point, this is where you'll commit to your paint line, and just slowly with a light pressure, because if you push too hard, it's going to make your paint line all wavy and stuff. So, once you get ready, use the light pressure, and then just slowly drag it towards you. And if you're dragging it towards you, you're going to want to curl the paintbrush up to keep your paintbrush, your paint, away from the baseboard. And this will help stop from making a mess all over your baseboard. So if you're scared to fully commit, you can go a couple of tacks at it. And then just slowly blow your paintbrush across that top edge. And then look at that nice solid paint line you get. Nice and consistent, and you don't make a huge mess. And it's a lot faster than some of the other messes that they show you on YouTube. Since we'll be rolling this wall with a mini roller, I'm going to take this cut line and then make it about, about 6 to 12 inches above it. This will make it so you don't have to bend over as far whenever you're rolling out the walls with your roller. I'll show you a little bit faster this time. you cut in your baseboard. Right next I'm going to show you how to use this mini roller. This little bad boy is amazing. You can fly through any paint job pretty fast with this little guy and it's really good for small spaces like bathrooms or any kind of door painting. Works great for it. So I'm going to show you how to paint a corner with the mini roller. That way you can roll faster and you get your paint job done faster. What I like to do is start from about halfway up and just work the paint in and then dip the roller again. Just make sure you have enough paint on the wall to make this method work properly. And you want to make sure to leave a heavy amount of paint on here so that way you can feather out to the other side. Then you'll dip your roller again, get your other side rolled in, and you see how you got this white line in the middle? I'll show you a great way to fix that. You're going to want to make sure to keep your roller cage at the bottom, and then you're going to use a firm pressure, and then work all that extra paint into the inside corner. Great for filling out, filling in any cracks that you may have here. Now that I got my corner filled in, I'm going to go back and adjust my roller paint texture. What I like to use is the L pattern. That way it gets you, get you a nice consistent paint line and texture. You're all done with your L technique. You just want to make sure that you roll, roll up your paint texture, and this will help slow down any runs that you may have. And on your outside edge, you're going to want to feather out by applying a light pressure to the inside of the roller or inside of the corner. And then this way, it will give you a nice texture that you can cut into later when you're rolling the wall. So, Brandon, how do you paint with the mini roller? How do you paint a whole wall with a mini roller? Well, I'm going to show you how to paint the whole wall with a mini roller. These things are awesome. They're so underrated. You can cover a lot of ground quickly, and you don't have to use one of those darn paint trays to get your paint onto your roller. What I like to do is just dip the roller into my cup bucket. And then always, I like to make sure you start about halfway up, and then you want to make sure you roll up. Because if you roll down, you're going to make a heck of a mess on your baseboard. So I like to start it, get about halfway, and then once you do that, 
Just take another dip with your roller. Get it nice and heavy with paint. And then you can just work the paint in the rest of the way. I always like to keep this outside edge, that edge, facing the direction that you'll be painting. And this gives you a feather edge for whenever you're rolling so you don't have hard, messy paint lines like that on the other side. You want to keep them wherever your roller is going to be. And to get any of those darn paint buggers, you just take them off with your finger wipe them on the edge of your cup bucket and then that way it stops you from turning that big bugger into a bunch of small little paint buggers that will mess up the texture and the smoothness of your paint job. After you put so much paint on the wall it's a good idea to go back and then always roll up. This will give your your wall a nice consistent paint texture and it will also slow, slow down any paint runs that may happen when you have too much paint on the wall. It's been a long day, you've been painting all day and you want to stop painting? I'll show you a great technique to make it easier to transition into your existing paint. What you want to do once you have the paint on the walls, you're going to flip your roller around so the frame's on the outside of the area that's not painted. And then you're just going to run the roller about halfway on that line that you just created. And that will give you a nice feathered edge where you can transition into later. And it won't give you a hard paint line whenever you paint back over it. So that's how you roll a wall with a mini roller. Hope you found this painting video helpful. If you enjoyed these painting tips and tricks, you can go to brandonmcgee.tv, sign up for our email subscribe list, and then I will show you all the cool tips and tricks of how to improve your home. Also, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time.